joined by a special guest, Harsha Upadhyay of Kota KMC. Harsha, great having you. Thanks so much for joining in. Good morning to you. Um, the last week, Harsha, we've had a confluence of events, couple of India-dedicated funds, or other couple of large funds selling out their India positions uh, has been the chatter, as has been this nervousness due to lower voter turnout. Uh, we've, we believe, as we hear from uh, dealing rooms, that that selling might likely ebb. Uh, and there's a reiteration from both PM Modi as well as Amit Shah on the NDTV network uh, that they are confident about the election math. Do you reckon this could bring about a bit of, uh, how do I say, an ebbing of the recent downtick plus volatility that we've seen in the markets last week? Uh, good morning. Uh, as far as we are concerned, uh, we continue to see this market as uh, one which is in the consolidation phase. I think if you look at last four to five months, uh, we have been in a range and consolidating well. I think it's healthy for the markets as well. Uh, we do understand that uh, the valuations in small caps and uh, mid caps uh, in that order uh, have been on the higher side for last several quarters. To that extent, any consolidation that takes place in the market is uh, definitely healthy, I would say. Uh, as far as the earnings season is concerned, it's not throwing up any negative surprises. So we do believe that after a certain amount of volatility in the very short term, uh, we should be again uh, looking at uh, uh, higher levels, given that our economy as well as our corporate fundamentals are looking quite strong. Hmm. OK. Uh this consolidation phase, Harsha, is it a time-bound phase to your mind? Uh, or do you reckon that uh, the consolidation will end post a further price correction that we've seen, not just in large caps, but also at the broader end of the spectrum? Because uh, we, we have seen a bit of a connective move there too. Well, Neeraj, if you look at uh, large caps, uh, they are probably at about 5 to 6% higher than long-term averages in terms of valuations at this point of time. So one can probably say that uh, even if there is further cut in markets, uh, it's unlikely that there will be very sharp drawdowns from these levels, uh, at least as far as large cap uh, component is concerned. However, the mid and small caps are still continuing uh, uh, looking very expensive. Uh, mid caps are at about 30% premium with their uh, recent historical averages. I'm not considering past 10-15 uh, years of average, but uh, from 2017-18 when the new categories were made and when the flows increased to these segments, if you consider that period and, and until now, even then uh, mid caps are trading at about 30% premium. Uh, small caps are probably trading in excess of 40% uh, premium to their historical average. So to that extent, uh, a shallow correction or a, a, a small time-wise correction may not be sufficient for mid and small caps to go back to their historical averages at this point of time. So to that extent, even with the current uh, uh, setup uh, where we have seen markets moving in a range for the last few months, I would say that uh, only large caps are uh, probably looking much better on a valuation basis. Uh, there is still some more time as well as uh, levels to go for uh, mid and small caps to reach the same levels. Uh, but uh, we are no one to say that it has to go to historical averages or uh, really attractive levels before it makes a, a further up move. Uh, so, so uh, any any time-wise correction is uh, definitely good, but uh, may not be uh, entirely sufficient for mid and small caps in our. Got it. Uh, we've seen a bit of a chalk and cheese performance. Like today, for example, Harsha, I was interested in knowing autos have been the big buzzwords and big gainers. But the commentary from Tata Motors, for example, seems to suggest that there is some caution near term for their case. I'm not asking you to comment on Tata Motors, of course, but I'm just saying, in their case, uh, they are saying that uh, JLR might have some near-term headwinds, but even the domestic business, CV business might see a bit of an impact because of uh, the election slowdown. And the passenger vehicle business, Maruti, Tata Motors, everybody's talking about inventory and a, and a high base, which might impact growth numbers in the near term. Uh, is our, our passenger vehicles, after having shown a remarkable uptick in the recent past, poised for a bit of a slowdown? If you look at domestic passenger vehicle business, uh, uh, clearly the growth rates seem to have come off a bit. Uh, how long this will continue, very difficult to say. Uh, however, even with these uh, kind of muted numbers, we still believe as a sector, auto and auto components will be uh, 
uh, delivering better than market average earnings growth for the next two years. So to that extent, they will uh, 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 probably continue to remain outperformers from a medium to long term perspective. But in the very short term, uh, there is a possibility that given uh, a lot of expectations have already been uh, discounted and, and uh, there has been a huge outperformance of the sector vis-a-vis -vis the overall market, uh, we could uh, start seeing a little bit of consolidation even uh, in the auto segment. Okay, okay. And, and on this, and, and the flip side, Harsha, there's this whole chatter again of rural at some point of time bottoming out, if not already. Some specific companies mentioned this in their commentary as well, though it is not across the board. But I wonder if two wheelers, which have, I mean, look at the last 10 year averages and they're hardly up relative to those. Uh, and if indeed the rural demand does come about, then do these businesses provide an opportunity despite the run-ups that we've seen already? Yes, uh, clearly we think uh, it's possible uh, because if you look at uh, uh, the growth rates in the two-wheeler segment for the last couple of years, uh, uh, they were probably not as good as what one would have expected given the weakness in the rural segment and the mass market segment. Uh, there was also a, a, a little bit of market loss, uh, market share loss to electric vehicles within the two-wheeler segment, uh, where uh, uh, historically the incumbent companies have not been so strong. So overall, I think uh, uh, that segment didn't deliver as much as uh, probably passenger vehicles in the last couple of years. Uh, when we look at it today, uh, clearly this is one of the sub-segments within auto, which is likely to grow at a, a much healthier pace in terms of volume growth. And also the margin should uh, hold up as, as we have seen most of the competition from electric vehicles also kind of uh, stabilizing at this point of time. Uh, uh, and, and, and clearly within uh, uh, automobile segment, uh, this remains uh, uh, the strongest in terms of the demand indicators as well as in terms of the earnings growth trajectory. And, and to add to that, the valuations of two-wheeler companies, at least some of them, have been at a, a much uh, a much more uh, relatively uh, comfortable levels as compared to uh, other segments of the auto market. So I think uh, 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 from here on, uh, within autos, probably two wheelers will uh, uh, probably deliver better results. Okay. Harsha, I'd love to understand how you think about this whole cap goods, capex theme in light of the fact that uh, there are, I mean, you know, different companies are now talking of different things. So. Uh, if I take Capgood stroke construction as play and look at what LNT had to say uh, for FY25, and then um, I look at what ABB's commentary and performance is uh, this time around as well, um, there, there is a bit of a change. I mean, of course, the companies are not strictly comparable, but I'm just clubbing Capgood's construction ENC as a bucket. What is your thought here? I mean, are select band of companies benefiting disproportionately? because of either the technological mode that they have or otherwise, because LNT is no mark to the game either, but they have sounded a bit cautious about FI25. Uh, we need to uh, clearly segment this entire uh, cap goods engineering GNC uh, bucket into something where, uh, 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 I mean, we are, we are continuously seeing order inflows coming into the entire segment. However, as you clearly mentioned, uh, there are fewer industrial companies uh, which are uh, uh, seeing better margin trajectory. One, commodities have remained uh, quite uh, uh, subdued in the recent times. Uh, we have also seen operating leverage helping them. And uh, 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 lastly, but not uh, unimportantly, the technology edge that many of these companies have because of the strong parent age and, and the experience of other uh, markets, other geographies, etc., is also helping them to uh, kind of uh, see better margins uh, with, with higher growth and higher uh, uh, improvement in order growth. So that segment clearly is the leader within the entire engineering cap goods construction space. As far as companies which are more focused on the construction phase, uh, space, uh, clearly uh, the, the overall growth continues to be very strong. The order inflows are very, very strong. However, the margins are unlikely to be as strong as uh, what you would see in an equipment manufacturer, for example. And also, there are uh, more vagaries to uh, the margin trajectories in case of a uh, EPC business or a construction business. So that's where we need to differentiate. Uh, however, when you look at it from a top-down perspective, whether it's construction, whether it is uh, pure industrials, all of them are seeing huge inflows into order book. And also the execution has improved. And what has happened over the last 15 years is 
clearly there has been a, a quite a, a healthy focus back on the cash flows and the balance sheet strength and many of them uh, who have been receiving orders uh, orders at a rapid pace today are the ones which have very very strong uh, balance sheets at uh, this point of time so unlike uh, what we had seen during the 2003 to 2008 where order books were growing but uh, that was not translating into uh, cash flows or healthy uh, balance sheets i think this time around at least the earlier uh, part of the cycle uh, we are seeing a clear differentiation and that's what is leading to a better performance of uh, some of these companies and we do believe that we are at an early stage in terms of this entire cycle uh, if you look at uh, a center and a state capex uh, that has been continuing at a very healthy double digit growth on a year on year basis should continue to our uh, trend uh, similarly going forward as well uh, we have seen huge improvement in private uh, uh, capacity addition announcements in uh, financial year 2023 and uh, financial year 2024 our guess is as you get into a uh, 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 post election period many of these announcements will move into implementation stage and that's when probably the private capex will also start to fire uh, once again so overall this entire space is looking uh, very very good and uh, we continue to have overweight exposure to this entire basket mm-hmm. okay there is some um, uh, favor that pharma seems to have found this time around uh, harsha Uh, selectively some of the uh, uh, pharma companies selectively some of the diagnostic companies have given good commentary shown good performance the stocks are reacting uh, is it a bucket that you would look at closely within the traditional so called defensives in terms of sectors it and fmcg continue, uh, continuously have been seeing our business headwinds and uh, the expected earnings growth rate over the next couple of years may lag that of the market uh, average earnings growth however in case of pharma uh, while it's not a very top down uh, call for us but there are specific uh, pockets within pharma where we think uh, the earnings growth rate will probably exceed that of the mar- market uh, earnings growth and from a valuation perspective as well uh, it's not at one of the uh, highest levels uh, that we have seen in the past so i think if you need to give a little bit of uh, defensive tilt to your portfolio or if you want to uh, look at adding some position within pharma uh, uh, you will definitely find uh, uh, a few uh, specific names within the uh, specific basket uh, and and uh, you should be able to see uh, reasonably strong uh, medium term growth uh, uh, growth in this uh, segment and also as you mentioned the sub segments of diagnostics of hospitals are uh, clearly are are uh, uh, going to be focus areas as government continuously been uh, looking at uh, increasing healthcare uh, expenditure and also providing healthcare to uh, um, the 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 entire population of this country and uh, from a long term perspective i think uh, hospitals and diagnostics clearly have a, a longer runway for uh, growth so overall yes uh, between uh, the traditional Uh, defensive segments uh, we kind of prefer uh, pharma at this point mhm okay um asha the financials have been an odd lot thus far while sbi kind of had one offs in its numbers and therefore optically looked okay by and large we seen the market reaction to psu numbers boi union bank etc case in point today but otherwise as well not being too sanguine now we know that since the covid lows psu banks as a bucket or as a basket have outperformed private banks quite massively uh, no way to figure out how long the cycle could last i'm trying to understand what's your sense about this whole our performance that we've seen thus far and whether that can reverse with the valuation differential now a lot narrower then it what used to then what used to be traditionally between private banks and psu banks uh well we are not in the camp of uh, uh, saying that uh, the the performances are going to be worse uh, um, public versus private banks in that sense uh the entire financial space has been uh, finding it difficult to uh, get low cost funding at this point of time and that's where i think uh, public sector banks score better than the private counterparts or uh, private uh, uh, nbfcs and that's been an advantage in this cycle for them and also unlike the past uh, their asset quality also continues to be very very strong in, in certain cases probably they're as good as or or better than some of the private uh, counterparts 
So given all of this, uh, we have seen a very, very uh, superior performance of public sector banks uh, as compared to private banks in the recent times. And that has also meant that the valuation differential that you were referring to has also uh, reduced to a considerable extent. So from here on, a similar kind of performance from public sector over private sector banks may not be uh, the base case assumption. Uh, however, given the fact that uh, there is still tailwind for them uh, going forward, uh, we do believe that they will continue to outperform the overall market. So we do have a reasonable mix of uh, private as well as uh, our public sector banks within our financials exposure across our 